Hello there. Welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today you join me in Oak Lodge, which is my woodland retreat out in the woodlands of southwest of England. And it's just a conversation today. So rather an informal chat in the woods. I'm just sat here late on a Saturday afternoon, enjoying the winter sunshine outside. I've got my wood burning stove over in the corner. I've got my candles keeping me well lit here. So hopefully we can have a proper little chat. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to answer a question from a viewer. And somebody called Roger has written to me and said, Ash, shouldn't we move away from the Royals as role models and aspire to become the more elegant man once again? not necessarily like stateside, but nevertheless distinguish ourselves more while still remaining steadfastly loyal to the crown. Well, Roger, I've wanted to address the conversation around royalty and their relationship with traditional and sartorial styles for quite some time, because I think I understand where you're coming from in your question. You know, it's a question really about breaking away from heritage and being perhaps ring fenced by the way that we should dress rather than perhaps the way we want to dress. I think that's what you mean in your question to me there. Uh, and it's an interesting point, you know, should we adopt this idea of modernity as our, as our touchstone for sartorial style or should we constantly have an eye behind us at the way things have been done in the past. And, you know, is royalty the right place to look for motivation to dress in a certain way? Well, my views on it, I mean, as a, you know, a British citizen and a subject of um, the monarchy for, in my entire life, in reality, um, I've always thought, particularly as the royal men, to be the epitome of men's style for a number of reasons, and I, I will explore that in a moment, but they do tend to be the absolute epitome. And, you know, when it comes to chap dressing, and I put chap in inverted commas here because to me, chap is just another word for gentleman. So the gentlemanly way. Uh, and I think the royals do certainly have an advantage when it comes to the way that they dress and being role models for us. Now, I think that stems back Traditionally, because in most societies, royalty have been the very top of the pyramid when it comes to style, culture, manners. However you want to look at it, the royal family have set the standard uh, in countries which still observe a monarchy in whatever fashion they choose to, you know, adhere to the, the, the sovereign principle of monarchy. Here in the UK, we have a uh, constitutional monarchy, which is largely a ceremonial position, but it still occupies a very uh, important part in society. But when I look at the royal men, um, you know, and how they've progressed things over years, you've only got to look backwards in time to see how other royal leaders have done things in the past. You know, if we look back to way back to King Louis XIV in France, um, he took to wearing a cravat as, you know, a thing of fancy that he enjoyed wearing. And in a very short period of time, the habit of wearing a cravat permeated entirely through French society, from nobility to the common man. Because when the common man looked up and he saw his king or her king wearing uh, a cravat, they wanted to emulate that person at the top of the pyramid. And perhaps if you look at it more, more recently, if you want to take a more recent example, um, uh, Prince, uh, Prince Edward, formerly the King Edward, the abdicated king, um, now you know, very famous because of his decision to leave his position as king, to marry Wallace Simpson in the 1930s, uh, thus, you know, leading to the, the diversion of the royal family into what it is today. But he was well known, well ahead of his time, for being a man who was rather avant-garde in the way that he dressed. You know, he uh, started wearing dinner jackets as the sort of way that people would dress uh, for dinner rather than the far more formal styles which were employed before. And he was very much experimental when it came to pairing colours, patterns, textures. Uh, his wardrobe was spectacular. And, you know, he really advanced uh, men's style and sartorial style, you know, decades ahead during his short time in the public eye. 
Now, when it comes to the British royal family, and particularly the men, um, I've always thought of them really as being at the very forefront of men's style. Uh, and there's a good, re good few reasons for that. I mean, at not the very least is the fact that they have unfettered access to the best kit in the world. So, you know, they can, they have no financial limits in reality. I mean, you know, the royal family in essence is worth billions of pounds, certainly millions of pounds on an annual basis. So they are able to buy anything, uh, have the very best of things. But not only that, they also have the opportunity to try these things all of the time. You know, if you and I, for instance, own a dinner jacket, unless you live in a, a very unusual life, you may, I may, as somebody who enjoys dressing, have the opportunity to wear that dinner jacket twice a year in my life, as it is right now, a normal life. But the royal family, I mean, I imagine they wear a dinner jacket on a weekly basis. So they are the ultimate testers of you know, the styles and they are progressing the styles as they go forward. And um, when you look at King Charles, obviously the majority of his life he was Prince Charles. He was a man who I think really embraced um, the love of dressing well for a gentleman. You know, and if you look back at images of him all his life. You know, he's one of the first royal men, I guess, who's been born and lived his entire life uh, in the public eye. You look at the image of images of him as a young fellow and he was always well-dressed. For the majority of his adult life, he generally uh, chose bespoke double-breasted suits in quite traditional conservative style, but there's hardly ever an image to be found of him where he hadn't employed an element of flamboyance within his clothing. He'll always be seen with a pocket square. He always has um, lapel decorations, so lapel badges, and often more than one. You know, he is not afraid to add embellishments to his clothing to make himself stand out, to be sartorially the best dressed man in the room. Now, I guess when you're in a position like him, people expect you to be the best dressed man in the room, so you've got to play up to that style, but still, you know, he truly embraced it. As he's grown, grown older now, you know, now he's king, of course, um, in recent years we, we've seen him steering away from double-breasted garments, as perhaps I suspected he would because his physique has thickened out, you know, he's in his mid-70s now, and he tends to favour single-breasted uh, suits these days. Again, quite traditional, quite stylish, but always with that embellishment on, on it some way or another. He's not afraid to, uh, to wear nice things. And when you look at the way he thinks of his clothing, you know, he's very well known for being somebody who's not afraid to make and mend. You know, I've seen many articles of style in which um, um, they've drawn a attention to the fact that, you know, he has suits in his collection which are decades old, which have been repaired and there are visible repairs on his clothing. But he's not afraid to continue wearing that clothing because it's bespoke clothing. It fits him exceptionally well. It's designed to stand the test of time. He has patches put on his suits. Uh, and I think some of my favourite images of um, the King's make do and mend ideology are his shoes. Now, obviously, he can have the best in the world, uh, you know, when he has John Lobb shoes and these are very expensive, exceptionally well-made shoes, absolutely the best shoes in the world without, without any regard for any other brand. Uh, but he wears shoes, the same black cap to Oxford's, and there are visible leather repairs on those shoes. And I'll throw some images here for you to see. But I think it's remarkable that a man, you know, with access to a huge fortune and any uh, number of the best things in the world at his disposal, he chooses to make do and mend, to keep things going for decades and decades in the case of his shoes. And I think that is highly commendable and it is a great lesson to us as intentionally well-dressed men ourselves because, you know, I now send my shoes back to the factory for repairs. I don't just discard a pair of shoes when the soles wear through. I have them repaired, factory refurbished if I have a pair of shoes which I'm able to do that with. Uh, and I think, you know, it's part of my duty. And I think it's part of the history of my clothing, that they go on that journey with me. Um, and one of the things I like about royalty as well is we 
can discover a lot about their styles because they they give the royal warrant to companies and brands that they work with. So, for instance, you know, um, John Lobb, for instance, you know, Loak Shoes and things like that. Um, Crockett and Jones, I believe, have a royal warrant. And there are many other up and coming brands. You know, it's their goal to get the royal warrant to become. Uh, there's a thing called the Royal Warrant Holders Association. And it's a, a company organization which um, curates all of those royal warrants in one place. You can search it. I'll put a link to their website down below. But it's a great place to find out really what are the best brands of all time because royalty don't patronize companies which are not up to snuff. You know, if they're not the best, you won't find the king or the queen or the dukes or the princes wearing them. Now, only three people. Wow, that's wrong now actually it's changed of course we've had a lot of change in the royal family in the last few years previously it was the queen the duke of edinburgh and the prince of wales who were entitled to issue a royal warrant to a company so we could see by looking at the royal warrant holders association all of those brands which were favored by royalty and it was like a cavalcade of the best of the best of course things are changing now you know our beloved queen has has passed into history as of course has her husband the Duke of Edinburgh uh, and the Prince of Wales has now become king. At this point the current Prince of Wales has yet to start issuing a royal warrant um, but when we do see Prince William, the new Prince of Wales, uh, issuing his royal warrant as time goes on, it'll be interesting to see the direction in which the royal family is heading. Because I think it's absolutely true, Prince William is a totally different man when it comes to sartorial style to his father. To me as an observer, it's clear that he doesn't take the same passion in the way that he dresses. He tends to be quite simple, quite conservative, always favoring single-breasted quite you know um, fairly slimly cut suits um, you know in normally navy or charcoal gray he tends to wear quite simple shoes black cap to oxford things like that tends to go with simple you know plain colored shirts and a tie appropriate to the situation he's in um, which is interesting we will see how he will develop because he's approaching i think he's about to be 40 hitting his middle years um, so and now he's able to issue warrants as prince of wales we will see some interesting things you know um, we know his style is very much um, associated with his history i mean a very good way of seeing that is the watch that he wears now prince william could wear anything you know his father very much uh, loves patek philippe and you know the very best of the best the king but prince william always always wears the omega 300 seamaster which was a gift to him from his mother when he was a small child or probably a young man actually um, his mother diana princess of wales now obviously the late princess of wales um she gave him that Omega Seamaster watch. It was the watch of the era, the watch worn by James Bond at the time. And I don't think I've ever seen a photograph where Prince William wears a watch and it isn't that watch. I, I don't think a, a photograph exists of him wearing anything other than that very treasured Omega Seamaster. And it looks like he's going to wear that watch forever until it you know, falls off his wrist, um, such as his passion for that, that emotional connection because his mother gave it to him. It's very special to him, clearly. So even though he could wear anything, he chooses the emotional connection. Um, and let's be honest, I mean, Prince William, he is kind of a pretty um, perfect frame for a man when it comes to wearing clothing. He's about six foot three. I think he's a tall fellow. He's well built. He's lean naturally. And, you know, I think pretty much anything will look good on him. He's got, he's got broad shoulders, slim waist. You know, he is the perfect role model or model for a man's suit. Uh, yet he chooses that simple traditional style. So yeah, uh, never wears a pocket square. Rarely, if ever, wears uh, lapel embellishments, you know, badges or anything either. So he likes the simple things. And we will see how that may change now that his role in the world uh, he's gone from being the sort of fancy free family man the the simple you know heir to the heir to the throne now he is prince of wales heir to the throne we will see if perhaps that additional responsibility and seriousness will be reflected in the way that he dresses so there we are roger i hope that's 
answered your question. My response really is that um, no, I don't think we need to look away from the royal family and you know look for other uh, inspiration when it comes to dressing well. For if you like classical style, I think the royal family evolves as it goes on. Prince Charles has evolved from his earlier days where he wore double-breasted suits, very bespoke, very clean, you know, uh, very stylishly cut, but very much formal. He's changed. You know, he is a man who evolves with time. We've seen Prince William, you know, embodying maybe more modern styles of simple classical cut suits, uh, simple, you know, small collections of clothing, uh, and being more connected to the emotional uh, feel of his clothing and his accessories like his watch than perhaps has been seen in the past. So I think the royalty, uh, particularly the men, evolve as society evolves. Of course it will. And I think we can just look to royal royalty to be an inspiration. Yes, they do have access to the best of the best when it comes to the accoutrement that they include in their, in their clothing collections. So they're an interesting thing to keep an eye on, but not necessarily emulate. And that's kind of the way I've always looked at it. You know, I look to the royal family and I think to myself, you know, the king, um, the new Prince of Wales, if they're dressing like that, you can't go far wrong if you were to follow, but of course you can put a bit of a personalised touch to it yourself. Whatever floats your boat, there might be something about patterns, about colours, about pocket squares, about bow ties, about cravats. Whatever works for you. Take a piece of their style, a piece of a style from over here, a bit from over there, and you marry it together and it becomes your personal style. So that's kind of the way that I think of it. It's a, it's a touchstone for sartorial excellence, yes it is, but it's not the be-all and end-all of everything. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that and my thoughts on that anyway. Um, I'm going to say goodbye to you today from uh, Oak Lodge and I'm going to sit here and enjoy the fire a little bit more, warm up, and I will encourage you if you've enjoyed this conversation, give it a thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, of course I'd be delighted to answer it in you know a fireside chat as we are having today. So drop me that question either in the comment section or by sending me an email and you'll find my email address in the about section on the main YouTube page. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, click that red subscribe button. And if you'd like to practically support the channel, uh, by all means, you can buy me a coffee and you will find the link to my buy me a coffee page in the show notes below. So with that note, I will throw another log on the fire. I'm going to sit back, relax and enjoy the fading light of this winter evening. So until the next time, dress well, but take your inspiration, not just from royalty, but from anywhere in life that you find you're impassioned by the way that you see sartorial style. Until the next time, take care, and I will see you again very soon.